Hello and welcome. My name is Amir Mirza. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to read attributes from within an XML file using Java. Now, before we begin, please refer to my previous tutorial on reading XML in Java to get an idea how to read XML data and load it into a Java program. To begin with, the idea of uh, XML data is to map your to design your classes in Java in such a way that they reflect the XML data and let me um, illustrate this example for you in this code there's a class called shopping cart now shopping cart has got as any other shopping cart would have uh, a user associated with that shopping cart and the items to be stored within that shopping cart and an XML data basically represents this information now in terms of writing an XML file it's completely user neutral which basically means is that it will represent any shopping cart of having any number of items for any user it really doesn't care what the user particular attributes are uh, nor does it care what's in the shopping cart it can hold just about any shopping items uh, provided they fit within the parameters of the design class which basically means is that they have a name or a name tag or author if it's a book basically it's an author so we have designed this class in such a way that it can store books basically the essentially basically we are we have got things like name of the author we've got name or title of the book uh, we've got the price of the book we've got the availability of the book uh, so on and so forth but before we get totally off track and uh, go and start going and talking about other stuff let me uh, bring the topic back to reading attributes in XML files so let's first talk about what are attributes and let me just pull up this uh, uh, text file and uh, we are looking here attributes are anything again as the language itself XML is completely a user-defined language so what goes into an XML document is essentially up to the person who designed it in my case I have designed a sh uh, a an XML file which contains a shopping cart attributes essentially in generic terms what attributes are that they give meaning to the data which is contained between the tags and let me prove it to you in my case I've got a shopping cart and I've got a list of attributes the attributes are the ID of the person uh, the password of the person, the name of the person, the email address and what their status are, are they a member of the, uh, of the website or are they a casual shopper what is their spending limit and this is totally arbitrary I can just about put any any attribute I feel like in there it really doesn't matter what does matter is whatever attributes I do put in there should make sense to me or uh, should make sense to the program or the application I'm writing now the library I'm using to read these attributes uh, is called exom and it can be found here it's www.exom.nu and basically what it is it's an easy to use uh, XML parsing library uh, built on the API's of SACS essentially uh, before uh, uh, we go and talk more about SACS or what it is uh, you can obviously Google it but SACS is one of the API's built into Java to parse Java code uh, sorry to parse XML code uh, but the problem with SACS is that it has got a very steep learning curve it takes a long while for a person to be able to learn SACS API's and uh, so the authors of this particular library in Java XOM XOM essentially wrote a wrapper around SACS and what they did was that they created very easy to use functions and properties which somebody would take maybe half an hour if somebody with a good enough knowledge of Java would take maybe half an hour to understand and start using it straight away in their program so uh, without uh, any further delay let me uh, uh, just uh, bring you up to speed um, I'm using the NetBeans IDE from Sun uh, the reason I use this IDE is, is because it's tightly integrated with Java it's from the same people who wrote the Java language so obviously it is very tightly integrated with their platform uh, 
So what we need to do first of all before we get started is to head back to XCOM and download the uh, download the the, the library from here. Once you have downloaded it, what we need to do is go into Tools and Options. Excuse me. Oh yeah, libraries of course, and we can load them like this. Basically, what you have to do is uh, add a jar file. Basically, you add a jar file, and in that case, just point it to wherever you download the XOM file and give it a name. Once you have done that, basically, in order to use that library, because you still won't be able to use it, what you have to do is come down here, right click, and add that library to your project. Now, the namespace of that library is loaded. Uh, uh, and you can basically use the namespace with the same statements as uh, it is done in Java as an import and you uh, doc xom uh, slash star uh, is basically reversing the the domain name uh, it's a standard practice most people do it uh, when developers write libraries for Java and if they've got a website they just turn it around completely for example my website is probasic.com.au so if I were to ever write a Java library the most natural selection would be au.com.probasic and then thereafter in within that namespace I would wrap up all my classes but essentially let's move forward before we can read attributes uh, from XML files, we need to be able to have um, uh, data which can basically essentially hold that information for us. Now, of course, we can't read any arbitrary information. We basically have to carefully map it and plan it, and that's what I'm going to talk you through. This um, this tutorial is essentially about reading attributes from within an XML file and I've told you before the attribute attributes themselves are basically are elements within an XML file which give meaning to the data in my case they give meaning to shopping cart such as who does the shopping cart belong to and this is totally arbitrary if I were to write a, a shopping cart about uh, uh, I don't know music selection I would be creating attributes which would help me define that particular music selection you know, name of the song or which year it was written and who wrote it and when it was published and which recording company published it so I hope you get my point in a way that uh, um, that they are totally arbitrary in nature so let's just move forward uh, once you've imported this library all you have to do is open the XML file in my file basically it's called XML file essentially through uh, one of the APIs called file and if anybody is wondering where that XML file is coming from it's a string value passed into this function so we basically open this file API load the read the string file and then we use the file input stream to be able to read that file once we have uh, uh, read that file what we want to do is call a builder class uh, from uh, from exom and uh, create an object from it once we have done that essentially we basically call the build function pass the uh, the file input stream into it and what it does is it creates a document for us and essentially document is a node like representation of the XML file um, just like um, for example a tree has root and then it grows out of the ground and branches off into many other um, branches uh, similarly documents of XML essentially they can be deeply nested and can branch off into have uh, tags within tags and those tags can have another tags and I mean to say I, I really am not aware of any theoretical or practical limit which can have uh, how many number of in nodes can you have within a node anyway moving forward uh, what you need to do is once you've got this root element you have to get the root element root element essentially is the first tag in in our case uh, the root element is the shopping cart the, basically it's like the beginning of the XML file it's it's like the root node from which every other node sort of spawns out of so we get the root element once you've got the root element uh, now we have got an a class called element which is basically uh, getting its root element from the document 
and now we start reading the attributes essentially the first attribute as you see, can see in this string file is the ID so you basically say uh, it's very easy I mean to say it's and very straightforward with this library you basically say get this attribute and you give the the name of the attribute which is my case ID and it will read the value associated with that attribute and basically say password and things like that now if if in um, in in um, in mostly you will be reading string data so you don't have to worry about but uh, if you ever read numerical data it's still represent, represented inside this XML file as um, as a string so what you have to do is like for example in my case there is a limit for the user which is hundred dollars it's a casual user in, in the in the shopping cart so we have put a limit that you can't really buy if you have to be a member to be able to buy stuff more than hundred dollars from us it's just an arbitrary limit but I'm just um, what I'm the point I'm trying to illustrate is that within this XML file there is a f attribute called limit now please do not confuse uh, uh, if 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 you want to draw the distinction between what an attribute is and what an actual XML data is please refer back to my previous video called reading XML in Java if you do a search on the YouTube you should be able to find it and that will help you draw the distinction between what the value between two XML tags is and what an attribute is so coming back to our original original code essentially the limit is a is a float uh, 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 variable so what we want to do is we want to get the attribute and then pass it through the API called pass float and uh, and then basically pass it on because essentially when a library like exom reads the data it reads the data as a string value not a float value so at some point what you have to do is take that data and convert it back to float and one of the static methods of float class uh, called pass float uh, just about here would help you do that and once you have done that basically you can then move forward to reading every other data loop through just about every node uh, within your XML file and start reading those ad, uh, that data back but my point with this video was just to show you how you can extract the data associated with attributes uh, and again um, if you want to see how actual data is extracted from uh, please refer back to my previous video called reading XML and that's it from now. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.